What's up, yo people? What's up? There's your boy K Solo. You already know it's been a minute. It's been a minute since so I haven't told you guys the story. It's been like about almost three weeks going on for real. So you already know it just came out from seeing the doctor, checking shit out, making sure everything's okay. You know, checking out on the pain and stuff like that. But anyway, guys, listen, man, this story is not a story. This is something that you guys gotta check out, man. You gotta make sure. This is for people that have somebody in jail. If you have a brother, a father, a husband, a son, a brother, a son, whatever, how can you find out if your loved ones are doing okay while they locked up in Rikers Island or upstate New York? How can you find this out? Easy. Well, not really easy, not really easy. You gotta look for certain things. You understand what I'm saying? Especially in Rikers Island. See, when you, when you go to state, it's hard to tell because in upstate, state, by the time you go to state, you're already pumped up. You know, you're already, you know, you got some weight in you. Uh, you, know, you got some kind of glow in you. Because everybody know, people that come out of jail, they, they come out with a glow, like a fresh glow, like damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you look okay. You haven't been, you know, you look all right. So, See, you don't get that glow. You, you got that glow when you go to state. You understand know what I'm saying? But when you go to the Rikers Island, the first, the first uh, couple couple weeks, if you go visit somebody, this how you know if he's not doing so good in jail. This how you know if they're taking his commissary, or they're stalling him, or they picking on him, or just really, I mean, you know, really disrespect him, shit like that. Um, these are some of the hints that you gotta write. Especially if somebody's getting visit. If you're getting a visit and you go visit somebody, your father, whatever it is, your husband, whatever it is, and you go and you visit this man, and you see that this man is not, well, how can I cannot say, I'm in a train. This, this little girl got, got me going crazy with that noise. She got me going crazy with that noise. Anyway, so it's like this, man. It's like, if you go visit somebody, right? And you see that person, and that person looks kind of not shaved, he's not shaved, uh, his lips are all dry. I gotta go to another train, guys, I can't and take it. Doors, I can't take it no more, hold up. I can't take it no more, I'm sorry, I can't take that no more. I couldn't take them no more. That little noise, I couldn't. Yeah, I'm from, from downstairs waiting for the train. I couldn't take it no more, I swear to God. Anyway, pardon me, man, but I couldn't take it. Anyway, when you go visit your loved one, if you see that he's scrubby, like having shaved in a couple of weeks, that's a sign. That could be also a sign of mental health. He's not taking care of himself, he's depressed. He's, um, you know, emotionally fucked up. Um, that's one of the ways that you find out if somebody going through a lot of depression, going through depression, um, shit like that, is because they start taking care of themselves. Definitely, they start taking care of their hygiene. They don't take care of their hygiene. They don't brush their mouth. They don't wash their face. They don't shave. They don't bathe. Uh, they don't wash their clothes. So, this is a big sign for you guys to know if your loved one is doing okay. If your loved one is doing okay, you know he's gonna go over there nice and shaved. He's gonna go over there smelling good. You know, his breath is gonna be smelling good. That's another thing right there, guys, that you can tell somebody's doing bad. If you go visit him and his breath is doing bad, that's a fucking sign right there that something's going on. Simple reason. You might be giving him money for commissary, but it doesn't mean that he's going to commissary and keeping the stuff that he's buying. Probably somebody's taking that away from him. Because the first thing somebody's gonna do when they get to jail is buy hygiene things. You're gonna buy your soap. You're gonna buy your, your, your shampoo. You're gonna buy your toothpaste. You're gonna buy your deodorant. That's a mandatory, that's mandatory, that's a must. You understand what I'm saying? You're gonna buy yourself a sandal. You know, it's mandatory, bro. It's mandatory. So, you start buying these things, take care of your hygiene. But when you see that someone is not taking care of his hygiene, and you, and you question them like your baby, are you buying soap, or baby, are you buying deodorant? You know, question your husband. 
question your brother. Yo, what's going on, man? You know, you're not smelling so good. You've been here two, three weeks. I'm being honest, you guys. Just, you know, never keep it. Never keep it away from your family, man. Let them know that you know something's going down with them. You understand what I'm saying? Let them know something's going down with them. You know something's going down because in the streets, this person is not that person that's locked up right now. And like I said, just because you're a killer in the streets doesn't mean that you're a killer in jail. There's no way in the world. No way in the world. You understand what I'm saying? That she can get shot down immediately. I have known people that with pussies in the world come to jail and become somebody in jail because someday some people feel sorry for them and they become sons. So when they become a son, forget about it. You know, they, they start acting up. So that's, you know, saying that's one of the reasons that a lot of guys that, that are pussy in New York come to jail and they get a father. Okay, back to the person that's not doing so good. Another thing, phone calls. If you see that your man, your husband, your father, whatever, is only calling you once every week, once every two weeks, something bad is going on. They're not letting him on the phone, or he don't got no money to call you. But then again, in the Rikers, they give you three phone calls every Sunday if you still like that. I haven't been in Ireland since 2006, so I'm pretty sure if, if they still paying for phone calls every Sunday, you get three phone calls that Sunday. So I don't see nobody selling that because a lot of people sell their phone calls. A lot of people sell their phone calls because they don't got no cigarette. Somebody who come with a roll of cigarette, they're gonna, they're gonna buy that phone call. You understand what I'm saying? So you gotta make sure about that. Your family not calling you. Like I said, two or three weeks passes by, they're not calling you. Like I tell you guys, something is really serious, okay? Like I said, they're not using, not letting you use the phone. Uh, uh, and if he does got money, if you guys are sending him money, there's no reason for him not to get on the phone because you guys are sending him money. So he's always going to have money on that phone. The only way he doesn't have money on that phone is somebody goes and takes the pin number. You understand what I'm saying? Because anybody get a pin number now. So they might take your pin number or you might sell your pin number and you're done. Because once you sell your pin number, you're done. Any money that you get up in the island, they're going to take that away from you. So if you got, if somebody sent you $50 and you owe $50 yeah, of phone calls, they're going to take that from you. Trust me. They don't, they, don't, they don't give you no break of nothing. Nothing. They're going to take whatever you owe them, they're going to take it from you, bro. Okay, there's no bullshit. They have no pity. They don't have no pity if you're not getting no visits. They don't have no pity for nothing, bro. All right? So just because you think that you're going to go to Ireland and you ain't going to have nobody that, that cares for you and you're going to be okay, that's a lie, bro. That's a fucking lie. Because you got mad people in the island that, that are selfish. And if they give you something, it's because your name got bells or if you ring bells or you hold weight. That's the only time somebody looks out for you if you hold weight. If you're a regular dude that, that don't got nobody taking care of you, uh, or if you do got somebody taking care of you and they taking your shit, they look at you like you ain't worth nothing, like you ain't, you're nobody. So nobody's gonna look out for you, bro. I seen this. But there's so many people that I could defend, you know what I'm saying? Because I was one of these people that used to look out for these people, that used to not go to the store, that used to not go to this, that used to not make no phone call. I always make sure that I used to buy two, three people something in commissary. If it was a coffee or soap or deodorant, shampoo, whatever, it was I, I used to buy it for two, three people. Buy them something like, you know, what you need? Deodorant, I got you. Yeah, what you need? You I need some coffee, so low, I got you. You know, I don't buy for everybody, man. Like I said, every week, I take, I pick two or three people. And I do that when I was in the island, when I used to live in the island, stuff like that. You understand what I'm saying? Now, defending people, that's a cash 22. Because how can you defend somebody that doesn't defend itself? You understand what I'm saying? You go in there, you're going to start a fight because somebody is picking on somebody. And you're going to go in there, give yourself all out. You're going to go all out for this person. And they say they jump you. This person is not going to help you, help you do shit. So it's a waste of time. You understand what I'm saying? So that's like a cash 22. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. 
So sometimes you gotta be careful about that, man. You know, looking out for another man that doesn't look out for himself. A man that looks out for himself, you know, let me tell you right now, you got a lot of people out there that's scared to get jumped. No question about that. You got a lot of people out there that don't like to get jumped. They think by getting jumped is something bad. Bro, I've been jumped many times. That's the problem when you when you're tall and you're a big body dude. People are gonna jump you. You understand what I'm saying? Especially if they find they know you're trying to fight. They're gonna jump you. You know, it's expected. I expect it. You feel me? I expect it. Anytime I went to a house and I set it off, no question about it, it was jump. But I always make sure two of these niggas get knocked the fuck out. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm getting older now. I'm getting older now, so all that bullshit, that shit's not gonna help you like that no more. You understand what I'm saying? You still got, I still got rounds in me, no question about that. But right now, you're not, you're not looking for that. What you're looking for is right now, if you go to jail at my age, just to chill the fuck out. Just chill. And, and help others that can't help themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Try to be, try, try to look out for people like that, man, because let me tell you right now, bro. If you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in nothing, man, you know, believe in yourself. Believe that you can look out for other people. But like I said, my brother, there's a lot of people out there that are selfish that won't give you nothing. Won't give you nothing. They can hear your stomach grow, and they won't give you a piece of bread, your hair, a piece of bread with a butter, or, or a piece of bread with a peanut butter, jelly, whatever. They won't give you nothing. Nothing. You understand what I'm saying? So you guys gotta be careful with that right there. Definitely guys gotta be careful with that. Because, like I said, man, a lot of people out there, they, they, they look for that. They look for the weak, and they will take from the weak. All right? They will suck you dry, man, so they can't take no more from you. But, if, you know, if you think that nigga's gonna go in there and rob you, and gonna leave you something, nah, bro. They're taking everything. Everything. Every little thing that you own, they're gonna take it. Then you gotta worry about every time you get something, they're gonna take it. Your family bring you any clothes from the visit, from the visit or package, they're gonna take it. You understand what I'm saying, guys? So look, I'm not trying to tell you guys. I'm not trying to tell. I'm not trying to tell you guys to go over there and become murderers and gangsters. I'm not trying to tell you guys to go over there and start popping off and shit. No, I'm not trying to tell you guys that. I'm just trying to tell you guys how it is, man. And just because you guys people like tell you, oh man. You go to jail, you gotta pop off. Yeah, you gotta pop off. No question about that. But just because you popped off one time, doesn't mean that's it. It's over with. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. It doesn't mean that you pop off one time and you're good. You're, nah, it ain't like that. It doesn't work like that. Because now you got beef. See, now you pop off on the blood. Now you got beef with blood. You feel me? You pop off on the crib. You got a beef with crib. You pop off on the land king. You got beef with land king. You pop up on the Muslim, you got, you got problems with the Muslim. You pop up on the proper center, you got problems with the proper center. You understand what I'm saying? So, it's very rare, it's very rare. And this is no bullshit, it's very rare if niggas give you a fair one. It's very rare that you get down and you start going it out. You start boxing with somebody and they take that loss. And they like, ah, right, you got me. It's very rare. It happens, but it's very rare. You got, dudes, you got dudes out there that still stand on their ground, they be like, all right, you got me. Boom, that's it, that's it, you got me, you got the best of me. We goody. You understand what I'm saying? We goody. But some dudes pride fucks them up so bad that they want to go, now, now, now they want to cut you. Now they want to get their bloods or their kings to take care of you. You understand what I'm saying? Every house you go to is a battle song. Because every house you go to is going to happen. Up to you go to one house, and that house is probably no kings, and you be like, all right, I don't got no beef with nobody here. Or you go to the house, I don't got no bloods, and you go, all right, all right, I can live here. You understand what I'm saying? I don't got to worry about fighting nobody now. You understand what I'm saying? But then you got to worry about the bullpens when you go to court. That's another thing, guys, when you go to court. One thing, for those that can't hold weight, don't go to, to the court, to the bullpens and sit in the back. Don't do that. You're gonna be hurt, okay? Everybody that you see people in the back, in the back seats and the bullpens and all that bullshit, they connected with somebody. It's very rare that you got somebody that like, like somebody that's not connected to neutral, that what you call neutral. That means he ain't down with no gangs, but he knows a bunch. And he don't play no games, he gets busy. People respect that. You don't gotta be get down with a gang, bro. 
to become somebody in the island. All right, so let me tell you something right now. I became a king in all Orleans Correctional Facility, 1989. My name was already already ringing. Junebug, Solo. My name was already ringing C74, C95. You understand what I'm saying? My name was already ringing. So when I became a king, I became a king in 1989. And that's because, let's keep it official. Bloods have 5% of Muslims, and the 5% of was really, really, really fucking up on people. That was really uh, taking advantage of Spanish people. They was. It was too much. So thank God for certain Spanish people. They did what they had to do, and boom. Now you got bloods that you got Spanish people in the bloods, no question. You got a lot of Spanish people that, 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 that got mad weight, that holds mad weight as a blood. Seriously. Same thing. You got blacks that land kings. You feel me? You got white people land kings. So it's all a mixture of, 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 of everything, bro. So all I'm telling you guys, man, is be careful. Be careful. This is the fucking honest truth. Okay? If you have a family member and you see these things, you see that he's not taking care of his hygiene. Once again, he's not taking care of his hygiene. He's not bathing. He's not shaving. He's not washing his mouth. Depression. Or they taking his shit. And if he's not calling you, number two, if he's not calling you, two weeks pass by, a week pass by, a, a couple of days pass by, and he doesn't call you, something is going down. You understand what I'm saying? They, and when somebody's not calling you, man, that's really bad because that means they got whoever's fucking their house, they got the house locked down. They got the house locked down. And nobody making no phone calls until you get somebody, that, until you get somebody that starts popping their guns, you feel me? Until you get somebody that starts popping. And then when you get that, then you have motherfuckers that, that be like, okay, this nigga popping, this nigga's getting busy, and niggas ain't fucking with him. I mean, you, you can catch people out there. You, you know who, who, who's, what, who's what, man. Because, let me tell you something. You can have, like, a house that's full of bloods, full of land kings, whatever. Okay. You go to that house. Let's say it's run by them. What's up, Let me get one. One dragon. Let's say it's run by, you know, bloods, land kings, whatever, running that house. You go to the house. You ain't down with nobody. You ain't down with no bloods. You ain't down with no land kings, no crits, no nothing. Let's say you get down, you know, you go in, the, you go in your population, you're chilling now. Okay. Now you got these niggas that, that you see their house is full of bloods, full of land kings, whatever. You're not none of that. People respect you if you bounce, if you pack up. I mean, not pack up. How can I say? People respect you more. If you come and, and you see that you ain't no blood, you ain't no king, you see bloods running the house and you want to become a blood. Oh, you see land kings running the house. You want to become a land king. You got to see through all that shit, man. I see through all that. I look at all that shit. You understand what I'm saying, guys? I look at all that. And I see who's who, what's what. And I'm going to keep it fishing with you. Whoever goes to the island right now, whoever goes to the Rikers Island right now, and they still repping land king, those are the real ones. Those are the real land kings, bro. Whoever goes to jail right now and reps land king, Without being afraid. Without, without, you know what I'm saying, no, 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 that bullshit. Bro, that's a real one. And all you need, all you need is four or five real ones. You feel I me? Mean? That's all you need, four or five real ones. To pop their gun. And get busy. And let it be known, it's not gonna happen. Not in our watch. You feel I me? Mean? So, you already know, man. Be careful for those pretenders that who I call pretenders. You know what I mean? Pretenders. Hold on. I'm gonna tell you who's a pretender. Let me get my picture. I'm gonna tell you guys who's a, who's a pretender. Who, who we gotta watch is a pretender. I'm gonna touch on lighting this shit up.
Let me get another light over there because she's she having a tough time. You feel like that shit out? Huh? No, it's not working, baby. Hold up, guys. Let me get let me get a light over here, man. Let me see if I get a match. Yeah, because this shit ain't working, right? The light ain't working, right? So I'm over here, here striking this shit. So I'm going to show you who's a pretender, right? You're going to find out who's a pretender, right? Not any minute now. Hold up. Hold up, guys. Let me get a book of matches. Let me get a book of matches because, you know, nowadays you got to buy fucking matches, bro. So that, you know, I remember back in the days, you used to buy a pack of cigarettes, they used to give you a book of matches. No more. That shit. They dead. That shit. Now you got to ask for a light for a match. Yo, can I get a book of matches? Oh, this pack of cigarettes that you spend like $15 on it? You know? What's up, Alex? No, no, no. Let me get a book of matches, Alex. Yeah, so I'm going to tell you guys right now what's a pretender. Okay, a pretender, right? A pretender is a guy. Thank you, my brother. A pretender is a guy that, 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 like I told you guys, that he's in jail. He's in Rikers, right? He's chilling. He's holding the house down. He got the house locked down. Okay. Now, here comes a person like me, right? I go to the house. Right there, that person starts looking at me and I start looking at that person. Because you gotta study the house, bro. You gotta study who's who, what's what. Who's holding weight, who's not holding weight. Uh, who's a cheerleader, who's not a cheerleader. Who's there, who's down for protection, who's not Who's not there for protection. I mean, you can find all that out, B. In, a, in, in about an hour, you can find out who's who. And, and two, three hours, you already know who's down, who's what in the house. No bullshit you, all right? That's why I tell everybody, if you go to a house, a jail house, first thing you do, look, search, study. Study who's around you. Study who's sleeping next to you. Uh, study who, who, who's running the phone, who's not running the phone. Uh, first thing you do, when, food, the food, when the food comes in, that's when you know who's who, who's what. When the fool comes in, that's when you know who's who, who's what. You understand what I'm saying? Because when the fool first come in, that's when the vultures come out. Everybody that's sleeping in the bed, everybody that, that's probably in the cell, or everybody that's sleeping in the dorm, they come out to start regulating. You feel me? They start regulating. Yeah, all right, yo, you serve the food, you take care of this, you take care of that, you take care of this. That's when you see who's running shit. You feel I me? Mean? Now, you can always have some, a second man that does that. And the, and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and the one that runs the house, you just lay back and just chill. Or well, his job is to make sure that, that, that the second man is doing everything that he's supposed to do. And once that man leaves, if there ain't nobody more powerful than that second dude, when the second dude takes over. And it goes on and on and on and on. Mm. Remember, look for that, okay? Look for that. There are people out there that does care. What's up, Marty? There are people that do care for you. There, there are people out there that does look out for you. But you got to watch that. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, like I said, there's people that, that, that will look out for you. But then you got somebody that will look out for you for interest. Like, let's say you tell them, oh, man, I can't wait to go to visit. 